Uh, I mean, that looks kind of deep. I mean, like, hey, yo, it's Yangin's back. I know you missed me. I was busy having a breakthrough and setting up an entirely new setup. You got there, my teleprompter. You got there, the entire studio light now, bro. We pop in. Like, check this out. Check this out. Holy moly, we got the entire setup going now. Got the lights. We about to be bussing. We like I have no excuse anymore. You know, the only excuses left are my limiting fucking beliefs. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road, man. I'm excited. Today we're going to explore a topic that is literally applicable to everyone. And that topic is, how do you create a life you love? Now, this is a question that I've been grappling with, I would say for my entirety of my life, as with all of us. This, this question is like, how, how do we get there? You know, how do we get to the point where we feel fulfilled and whole and just excited to live in our lives? And I've come up with a couple of these points. So today I'm going to go through them. Number one. You need to learn to dynamically adapt to situations. So what is your default mode of going through the world, right? You need that self-awareness to which you are present in every situation so that you can be aware of how are you going through every situation. And from that place, from that place, you can dynamically adapt to situations. Because a lot of the times in life, it's not the situations that make our life shitty. You know, we could be dirt poor, we could be fat, we could be, <laughs> we could be, like, life can throw all kinds of shit at us. But it's not about the situations, but it's about how do we adapt? You know, how do we take it? How does this process that, right? It's what is our default mode of thinking? And a lot of the times, it's good to have a positive default mode, but the other thing is that not to become so rigid in our default mode that we close off other ways of perceiving life. Because think about how often we suffer and it takes that, we take, it takes that sudden realization of realizing that, oh, it's not the situation that I needed to reject. It was that I was thinking from a limited frame of mind that didn't allow me to see the situation from a different perspective. So maybe that situation was a complete blessing in disguise, but because I was so stuck in here thinking of how bad and how boo-hoo it was, that was what was causing me suffering and preventing me from coming to the present and embracing this experience that I've been given and allowing myself to flow through it with ease and effortlessness. So that's what I mean by learning to dyna dynamically adapt to situations. Number two, we need to learn to explore our emotions and our feelings. And this is true, especially for, for guys, because as men, we grow up with this, like, you need to be masculine, you need to be stoic, you need to be emotionless. This kind of philosophy is taught to us as guys and it has its use now this goes back to being dy dynamically adapting to situations right because you can become so rigid in the sense of i need to be masculine i need to be emotionless i need to not cry i need to have no emotions that you end up completely rejecting your inner world you see it as something to be overcome as something to be stomped on as something to conquer but how often do we get hit with a sudden wake up call when we realize, oh shit, I should have listened to the feeling inside of me. You know, when, when the pain gets so painful that no other outside situation, no matter what you try to do, can solve it. And you realize this, this feeling of pain was within the entire time, right? Especially as guys and more, and women are falling into this trap nowadays. Um, because of the equal workplace is this fallacy of, you know, discipline yourself, you know, work hard, you know, but 
take the time to take care of your inner world. You know, why are you feeling the emotions and feelings that you feel? They're not just there because they're stupid. They're, they're there. They're whispering something to you. So take a listen to what's going on inside your inner world. And you just might discover something that you thought you had to look for somewhere in, in a circumstance that just had to happen your way. When in fact, it was something in here that you neglected for so long. Number three, do you allow yourself to be creative? Now, people have this misconception that creativity is, you know, they lack creativity. I, I've never been creative. You know, I can't draw. I can't make art. But that's not what creativity is. Yes, that's a form of creativity. But we've been so misled because of the way that, that the school system teaches us that we're not creative, you know, that we, have, we follow we follow a factory line, we follow a rigid system, that we fall into this trap that we don't have any creativity. But that's further from the truth because the, the truth of the matter is that you do have creativity. All, cre all creativity is, is imagination. And I know that's a big word because, oh, imagination. I don't have imagination. I'm realistic, right? Because we've been taught our whole lives, you be realistic, you know, get a job, get a degree. Be realistic, you know, don't dare to imagine. But this entire world was created from imagination, you know. Where do you think the pyramids of Giza came from? Where do you think the Eiffel Tower came from? Where do you think every marvelous piece of architecture to your MacBook Pro, to your camera, to your iPhone, where do you think that came from? That came from the depths of the imagination. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. But what I'm, I am saying is that they were not afraid to imagine. What is the harm? What could possibly be the worst thing that could happen if you allowed your mind to imagine? Because think about it. What kind of life do you want to live? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to, where do you want to go? What do you want to do for work? Most of us are so stuck in this worker bee, you know, factory line, school system, rigid training. We have a tunnel vision that does not allow our vision, our metaphorical vision, to expand itself into a sense of imaginative openness, of imagining, like, what do we want? You know, what could life look like if I wasn't stuck in accounting? What could life look like if I took the courageous step to tune into my feelings? So this goes back to point number two, to tune into what I feel in my heart in my intuition, in my inner wisdom, instead of rationalizing in a way because it wasn't realistic or it's not what everyone else is doing. Because think of how often what that is, is actually just fear, masquerading as being realistic, as being logical, as being rational. How often is that fear? Number four, what's your environment like? Now, I don't mean just your physical environment, because we've all heard that a million times, you know. Change, clean up your physical environment. Unclutter your space and your head will be clear. Now, that's 100% true. But what I'm trying to get the nuance of with this particular point is that have you created the environment to be that person that you want to be? I mean that in a mental environment, not just physical, but I'm focusing on the mental here. Have you created that environment to allow yourself to step into the role of the kind of person you want to be? So I'll give an example, right? You know, for a long time, I've done YouTube for probably oh, like two years now. I don't even know at this point, but I was always, you know, just afraid of the camera. I was, I was like, yeah, I want to do it, but I'm not so sure of myself that I can just let myself completely out. And I don't know if, if this makes a difference, but I don't like maybe you can see a difference in my attitude and, and the way I'm, I'm talking to the camera and my hand gestures and just my, my flow of thoughts. I used to think, you know, it's like, oh, this isn't good enough. And it's like, oh, what well, people think of me, right? It's like that hesitation. And we hesitate when we're afraid 
to step into the role of that kind of person we want to be. So that, that links to that question. Have you created the environment to be that person you want to be? And sometimes it takes a huge fucking leap. It takes a leap into the unknown where you're just staring at it for years and months. You're staring at the ledge. You're on the ledge and you're staring down. And you're just like, oh, uh, I mean, that looks kind of deep. I mean, like, I know if I jump that, like, you know, like, uh, it'll be good for me. I'll become, I'll make progress. But, But like, I'm scared, right? But think about it. Any moment in your life where you jumped, you're in free fall. It's out of your control now, in a sense. You're you're fully in the unknown. Think about it. When you're in the middle of the air, you just, you're in utter ecstasy and bliss. And you're like, ah, oh, take me away. You know, I give my control to you. I trust that everything will work out. And so this begs the question, have you created the environment to be that person? How, are you allowing yourself to step into that role. How would you need to behave? How would you need to treat other people? How would you need to treat yourself? How would you speak to yourself? How would you speak to yourself in your inner dialogue? How would you speak yourself outwardly? How would you express yourself? What would you be doing on a day to day? What would you practice? What mental habits would you practice? What behavioral, physical routine habits would you practice? Why would you practice them? As the person who has stepped into that environment, it would be so obvious to you and you would know. So, I'm going to end it there. To sum up, number one, dynamically adapt to situations because you need this sense of adaptation in order to move through life with fluency like water water doesn't water doesn't hit the rock water moves around it and it doesn't matter what shape the rock is it can swivel and flow through it okay number two explore your emotions and your feelings because our inner world is just as real as the outer world but we're mistaken science materialism has mistaken us to think that the only thing real is what you see visually we think Seeing is believing, but in reality, in truth, believing is seeing. Because two people can see the same thing and see two different things. Number three, do you allow yourself to be creative? Do you allow yourself to imagine? Do you allow yourself to imagine a life that could be different from the path that was sold to you? Do you allow yourself to imagine a reality where things weren't as you thought they were or what other people told you they were. And number four, your environment. Have you created the environment to be that person you want to be? So I'll leave you with these four points and questions and let me know what in particular resonated with you. And hit the like, hit the subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.